What's going on everybody? Mike Taylor, student physical therapist, here today to help rid society of a major problem. Now that problem is of course low back pain, which is one of the leading causes of disability and medical appointments in the United States. So most of us have at one point or another experienced an episode of low back pain, and I'm certainly no exception. It's not a fun time, and the uncertainty and anxiousness that accompanies this pain can make it kind of different than a lot of other pains we may experience in our life. But what if I told you that there's a better chance of successfully getting rid of this pain than you may think? What I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna tell you what you can do if you're experiencing low back pain after doing something like lifting weights, doing chores, getting in and out of your car. It's my hope that by following the tips and information outlined in this video that you can get back to doing the activities you love sooner rather than later without pain. Before we begin, I wanna be very clear that this does not replace the opinion or advice of a trained medical professional. What I'm presenting in this video is merely a shift in perspective that you can utilize to help reframe your current status and your future prognosis based on evidence. So without further ado, here are the steps that you should follow next time you experience an acute episode of low back pain. The first step, stay calm. You are not broken. You are not even dysfunctional. And I would really recommend trying to detach yourself from using these types of phrases and expressions because words have meaning. Even though you may mean it in a joking sort of way, our perception can quickly become reality. Instead, I invite you to consider the following facts. Your spine is extremely strong and absolutely capable of withstanding the normal stresses that average humans place upon it. For all of you weightlifters out there, your spine adapts to stress just like the rest of your body does. Your spine is not weak and you are not fragile. Even if you have some sort of serious damage like a herniated disc, that alone does not really matter. There are plenty of people out there in the world walking around right now with disc herniations that would show up on an MRI, but are symptom free. How is that possible, you might ask? It is because pain is not always a direct reflection of damage or loss of function, and vice versa. What this means is that our focus should be on restoring function and reducing pain instead of fixing some part of your anatomy. Additionally, discs resorb and heal over time anyway, just like any other tissue in your body. Speaking of other tissues in your body, your low back has all kinds of structures such as joints, disc, and muscle that are all innervated. And what this means is that there are a lot of potential pain generators in this area, and it can be very difficult and probably a futile effort to try to identify the root cause of your very general low back pain. Your body can be very tricky at making one thing feel like another, and at the end of the day, it's important to remember that the important thing is that we are reducing pain and restoring function, not treating anatomy. And lastly, I have some really good news for you. In most cases, acute low back pain tends to get better within six weeks, regardless of the type of treatment. The reason I share all of this with you is because one of the negative prognostic indicators for recovering from acute episodes of low back pain is one's expectations for recovery at the time of injury. If you are fearful or anxious and make your back pain your identity, your chances for success go down. The research suggests that with decreased fearfulness and anxiety over one's low back pain, pain also decreases. So saying things like, I'll never be the same again, or I'll always have this issue, is not tempering your expectations. In fact, it is writing your future for you. You have control. So in summary, the first and most important thing that you can do is just not freak out. Remember, you are strong, you are not broken, your anatomy is now what defines you, and you can get better. The next thing you should do once you've collected yourself is you should move as much as you can tolerate. Now this may seem counterintuitive, but exercise and gentle movement has actually been shown to help decrease pain, whereas going home and laying on the couch binging Netflix for a week is associated with poor outcomes in general. It's important to know that there's a difference between relative rest and total rest. While high impact and stressful activities may need to take a back seat for a little while, gentle movements that actually target the area that's painful are good. This is likely due to a combination of factors, some physiological and some psychological, but the main one that I wanna drive home is that continuing to move in spite of pain helps to reduce fearfulness and anxiety. It gives you the clear evidence you need to tell yourself, hey, I'm not broken, I'm gonna be okay. It gives you the power instead of your pain. With that out of the way, some exercises that you can begin doing immediately include things like gentle lumbar rotations, quadruped cat camel, and prone lumbar extensions. There's nothing particularly special about these exercises, but they target the lumbar spine and the hips and allow them to move in a gentle way that is generally not threatening. You can adjust the intensity of these exercises as needed to be tolerable, but if you do nothing else, just go for a walk. Not a power walk, just a nice leisurely stroll. Even better if you take a dog with you. 
You should perform these exercises daily, up to three times per day. And as you note your pain decreasing and your function increasing, you should progress the exercises to be more like the things that you were doing before the injury and pain happened in the first place. There are many ways to skin a cat and everybody's way forward is gonna be slightly different. But it's my hope that with the principles outlined in this video, you can take a step back, reframe your pain and your current functional status, make a plan, and get back to doing the things that you love. Above all else, just remember, you are not your low back pain. As always guys, let me know if you have any questions or comments. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, happy training.